Another evening of Museum in Lotus with Mr. Giuseppe De Giosa here. I really love uh, the setting since last week. Don't you find it like it's amazing? It, it's so picturesque, you know. Very, very beautiful. And we are surrounded by beautiful pieces, the background, yeah, the background. by Master Yoon's beautiful your, paintings. Your background today is this of Master Yoon's painting that we talked about previously. I'm still yes. putting it here because I don't think they've gotten enough of it. And um, the upgraded version of the Peach Blossom tree. You know, when you were here last week, it was the first day of the Peach Blossom tree. You, I remember. If you look up today, it's blooming already. I feel so privileged that uh, means in this wonderful dark pink flowers. Uh, the, I can see many more than what were available last week. It was so, just seven days. Look at this. Incredible. What is nature? And I mean, that will tell us that spring is coming. Yes. Yeah, yes. New Year uh, is coming. So today's episode is very special. I think it is in many ways. I, and uh, I discussed with Mr. Pino about this. I said, should we do this thing? Because it's really special. Uh, every single episode, we jump country to country. Last week, we jumped back to China. Previously, we were in Burma. Uh, love the mirror. The mirror is still here. And uh, today, we are going to fly to different places at one go because the year of the tiger is upon us. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So, I'm just, so are you familiar? But you have spent a lot of time in Asia. So, are you familiar with the zodiac sim, uh, system? I know that there are 12 symbols, if I'm not mistaken. Right, right. There is basically one following the other. Right. And I think at the end of the ox starts basically the tiger, That's which right, is yeah. followed by the rabbit. Very good, yeah. <laughs> but I have to stop here. But you, you, because you spent quite a considerable time in Hong Kong, right? How many years did you spent? I was there? in Hong Kong for over three years. You know, when it comes to this kind of belief, uh, Hong Kong people that are there, you know, they are like, They'll follow. Incredible, yes. How do yes. you celebrate your Chinese New Year when you're back in Hong Kong? I mean, I used to celebrate going out with my colleagues, uh, and maybe three, four days before Chinese New Year, to try to find a little place where we could have dim sum, I remember, for lunch. Right. And... Uh, if you go to Lan Kui Fang often? Yes. <laughs> yes, I would. I would. Yeah. I would. But within the building where the bank was located, uh, which is... Uh, basically um, finance one right 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 okay uh, maybe i'm not correct about finance one, but anyway it was one of Is the two or central th then central right. Am I right? yes yeah. yes there were a number of very good uh, local restaurants uh, yes. so it was just a walk to reach there and uh, it's terrible that we talk about this because to be honest i mean the food in hong kong is just it's just there Fantastic. you walk into a place it's going to be good food or excellent food. Yes, huh? yes, yes. Singapore, you still have to go back to the stick to the one step. You know yes, better. Yes, yeah. yes, So, oh, So you're familiar with this. How do you celebrate your Chinese New Year in Singapore then? I do, I do exactly the same thing oh, exactly I used to do. Yeah. I would go out with friends and, uh, and try something new, possibly. Okay. But uh, yes, it, it's a nice tradition and I've been doing And I love when there's the mixture of the, do that, you do that thing? I just adore it. Thing? Yes, yeah. I love the tossing of that. Okay. And the salmon. It's going to happen soon, huh? It's going to huh? happen soon. Yeah, yes. you know, people, they will do it. They will do that thing, the Lao Yu Sen thing from, you know, the, ah, the, such a long period, 15, the whole 15 days of Chinese New Year. Wonderful tradition. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Are there a lot of Chinese in Italy? Can I say, it's a very interesting question that you're raising. Uh, I wouldn't know the numbers per se, but the biggest uh, cities, uh, and I'm just n n uh, mentioning a couple of them, Rome, Milan, Florence, there would be actually rustic uh, where you see communities of uh, Chinese. Right. And outside of uh, Florence, uh, there's one particular town where I think it's majority uh, inhabited by the Chinese. So, well, okay, so they do celebrate Chinese New Year. They of have course, to of course. celebrate Chinese of New course. Year. Right. And slowly, slowly, I think the Italian are starting to appreciate um, Chinese restaurants. Uh, I mean, I hear yeah. uh, that, that they love now to have noodles uh, and they, they can find As the in normal... Chinese? Yes. Yeah. Noodles is a thing to them. No, they're just 
uh, from noodles to pasta, that's all, right? Yeah. But can I tell you, the yeah. Italians are starting to appreciate noodles. Oh. So they go to supermarket and they find the, the, basically the bags of noodles yeah. with the, 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 the sauce or whatever is there. So they just need to warm it up in uh, hot water, and here you are. Oh, I know what you mean. It's uh, what, we, what we Asians always use because it came, that thing came from Japan. Instant noodles. Thing. Instant noodles. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So you talk about Italian and Chinese. Uh, something we're going to touch on later has got to do with that as well. Got to do with Italian and Chinese. In fact, these two cultures are very closely related. Mr. Pino will definitely know about this. I'm going to talk about this later. Uh, so yeah, so the year of tiger is upon us, and in fact, we are six days away. To, yeah, six days from the first day of the lunar new year, um, and that's why today we've decided that we are not going to just talk about one specific country or region. We're going to talk about a particular symbol that somehow have crossed, found its way across different cultures, and became of a particular importance to many people. And we are talking about tiger, right? We're talking about tigers, but not only not tigers. Not only tigers, uh, extended relative members, the big cats. Yeah. <laughs> yes, relatives, uh, yes. <laughs> so today we are talking about tigers and lions, uh, and we find them in many different cultures, uh, many different countries in their antiques. They are collected by Mastery, not selling them, uh, but good to come to the gallery to appreciate them, along with Mastery's art and other collections. So, uh, what is the first thing we should talk about? I would like to talk about this wonderful Tibetan 19th century wood, uh, softwood, uh, Tibetan chest. Okay, so this is from Tibet, 19th century. 19th which century. Brings us back to the 1800s. Correct. So about 200 years, okay. 200 plus years. Yes, possibly yeah. 200 years. Yep. Okay, what is particular is about the tiger pelt that we see Right. And uh, what a wonderful location, just a few days away from the Tiger Year and the celebration, we can bring a beautiful piece like this here to the galleries. Uh, so this is a chest. This is a chest. And uh, it's because there is a tiger pelt over here. Correct. I hope you can capture this. Um, tiger pelts, what do you mean by tiger pelt? Okay, interestingly, let, let, let's mention about the importance for the Tibetan of the tiger pelts. Right. The tiger pelts uh, were found in the eastern part of uh, Tibet. Right. And it's a specific region which is called Kham. Now, mind you, this particular area borders with uh, Yunnan and uh, also border with another province of uh, China. Right. So, Sichuan. Right, okay? right. I may not be pronouncing it correctly, but these are the two. So the if hot, you do- hot area, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so if you do look at the map, you would see Kham and the bordering two Chinese provinces. Right, right. What is particular about uh, the pelts? Uh, the pelts, of course, symbolize strength. They symbolize power. They symbolize the respect uh, that the tiger is held uh, in the mentality of the Tibetans. Uh. Right. So when we think about it, uh, I, I see the High Lama basically seated on a tiger pelt and ah. starting the meditation. Right. I think we, yeah, since you, you since you mentioned this, we might have seen this in like recreated new movies that this would have been a scene, yeah. So this was very, very precious. But at the same time, because the tiger was widely hunted uh, mm. in Asia, so basically the number of tigers shrank dramatically. Right. And, uh, and therefore, the pelts were extremely rare to find, and the prices also were very, very high. Okay. Now imagine that when the high Lama would travel, their belongings uh, would be covered uh, by a tiger pelt. Right. And the recognition by the devotees uh, when the high Lama would traverse the path from one place to the other, 
or from monastery to another, they would recognize, stop the Lama, and basically give their respect at the same time receive the blessing. So he who has the tiger pelt with him is the leader. It's the it's one the of, yeah, it's the one. It's the leader. And now we see this, the same symbol, the same motif happening on this chest over here. Absolutely. Right? Now, what I said, I mean, if you look at the face, we see some borders. Right. Of different colors. Okay. Yes, okay. we do, yes. Now, you see that the field is colored with a fantastic red pigment. Beautiful. Yes. But in the middle of the field, you see this wonderful uh, rectangle. And inside the rectangle, it's been depicted in a very simple way, just the stripes of the, the tiger. tiger. So this is very Zen kind of look. But in the old days, yeah. when the pelts were available, okay. it's possible that some of the boxes, even like this, would have the true pelt, maybe a, uh. a part of the pelt, which was then attached to the case, right, to right. this box. Now, what's interesting about this box I mentioned that this is all made of uh, softwood. Right. And uh, imagine the top of this was possibly all lacquered. Mm. But due to the, the time passing, the lacquer has come away. Mm. It can be opened from the front. Now, as you can see, there's a ledge yeah. that goes uh, from the, the top to the front. And this would basically be utilized as a mechanism with a lock to contain precious items. When you look at the piece and the iron, the iron is all hand forged. When we look at the piece, it's all beautifully decorated. Yeah. So what I suggest uh, to anybody coming and visiting the gallery to spend just a little bit of time in looking at all the details uh, of this chest, Absolutely. of this magnificent chest. So in fact, you know, we used this chest before during our winter solstice program as the co main host, like my team, was sitting here. This was actually our table. <laughs> great size. Great size. Great colors. Uh, I didn't notice it was tiger stripes back then. Yes. But now, that since that we are the tiger years upon us, I notice it and uh, really an apt way of bringing this across before the Chinese New Year starts. So you know we have several days before we close for Chinese New Year break. Uh, will be 31st of January would be the Chinese New Year Eve. We'll be here until about, about 4, 5 p.m. probably. You can come by and uh, you know, absorb a little bit and feel a little bit that two, 300 years ago, the Tibetans were actually already recognizing a tiger as a symbol of their leader. That means we can guess like why would they imprint these tiger stripes on this chest? Because you mentioned that the, the, the Lama, the, the, the leader, would be the one with the tiger pelt. Yes. And on this chest, we see uh, on the sides we have, and uh, the front we have the, 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 the motifs or the symbols representing a ti tiger. Very interesting point that you make, Mr. Khan. I kind of feel like it's a signature. It's almost like a signature, but even more, when I look at the front, uh, it's distinctly, for me, the tiger stripes. When I look at the side, yeah. for me, these are leopard oh. pelt definition. Right, okay. They're not the same. Not tiger. Okay, so we have tiger on the front. And on, and the, on the, side, the side, does it happen on my side as well? There is. Oh, there uh, is slightly different one from the other. But it's a definitely, leopard. That, for me, it's a leopard. Okay. For me, it's a leopard. Ah, it's two yes. different, uh, the kind of design. Yes, it's very, a Very, very different. Right. Oh, now that you mention, oh, I haven't noticed, yeah. Okay. And also the side are beautifully colored in red. Yeah. We don't see on the side the, the um, frames that we see on the front now. This definitely comes from one particular place in Tibet. Again, Kham. Yes. And is the area very near to
to China and the provinces that I mentioned. Right. So when I look at something like this, uh, it brings me to mind that Dirty Betten copied, in yeah. inverted comma, the technique of the Chinese in Why? constructing a box, a case like this. And you see that on the fronts, we have the mortise and te Ten tenon technique. The Lego technique, yeah. Which is the Lego technique on the front, on one side or the other. I see, I see. Interesting. So a very strong influence that we see. One more thing that I would like to highlight, if we look at the base, the four corners have have a system to secure, again, the, co the, the corners in, uh, in iron. Right. And again, this would give the solidity and the stability Absolutely. to this wonderful Absolutely. box. Again, if you ask me where this would possibly come from, possibly a monastery. Right. And uh, with the, you mentioned leopard, right? Yes. So probably snow leopard. No leopard. Snow yeah. leopard prints and the tiger prints on this chest. I'm thinking it like it's a signature. Who does this chest belong to and what is it used to store? Um, probably it belonged to the, the, the leader that shows that this is his chest and his stuff, you know, and all the scriptures or, or maybe clothing or something will be in this chest. So this is a high order chest. And it commands respect. It commands respect. It commands authority. Right. That's the reason why I tend to bring this into a monastery. Right, right, right. True, so whatever true. this was placed, and whoever would see a chest like this would recognize the importance. Right. Let's not forget that inside there were definitely precious uh, things. There's if a not, lock. Why the lock? For why one, the right? lock? Yeah. Why the lock? So definitely precious, beautiful, elegant, I would say, in many ways, in beautiful condition. And uh, what else to say about a chest like this, a collector's item? Yeah, definitely. So it's great that you know, while you're here preparing for your Chinese New Year and next year's feng shui, and also appreciating Master Yin's feng shui art, uh, you get to feel all these amazing uh, collections as well especially since we are the year of the tiger. So we saw the tiger. Uh, we have tiger's relative, the leopard. Yes, we have. And uh, actually, we also have a pair of leopards here. Yes, we do have. Shall we take a look? In, oh. in a minute. Oh, in a minute, yeah. OK, I've just indicated here yeah. the abstract stripe design of the leopard. Yes. But this is only one of the depiction of a leopard. Oh. In the collection of Master Yun, I also saw a box, and the box is here. And I would just oh, like to take okay. it out sure. and show you that this was not only way by the Tibetans of depicting uh, the leopard. They would, uh, sorry, the leopard. They would actually, the tiger, they would actually represent it uh, in a different way. Okay. Let, let me take All right. this wonderful box is it it's light it's quite light it's 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 light okay here wow. another box this is another box ah. without any doubts this also comes from Kam. it shares Tibet. with the uh, Kam Tibet yeah. it also shares the same kind of wood which is soft wood right but look how beautiful the design is Absolutely. of the tiger. You can see the tiger in all the details. It's quite light, huh? It's quite light. This is, uh, sorry, I just had to take a closer look myself. The, oh, the whole, we don't just see the stripes, we see the whole tiger. The entire tiger. tiger that is here. It's, yes. Uh, this is really something. I think I turned it a little bit for them to capture it. This is really something. The whole tiger it's present. But look at the proportion of the tiger, look at the bulging guy. Again, look at the stripes. Now, if there was possibly a doubt about the front of the bigger chest not being tiger, look at this. It's basically it's 100% exactly, tiger, yeah. tiger. And this is what, look at the beautiful tails. And this is surrounded by an amazing frame. 
Yes, it surely is. The sides, they have flowers. Oh, okay. And when you look at this flower here, to me, this is peony. And this is the flower of the gods. It's yellow, which is exactly how the peony is shown. On top, we have beautiful motif of clouds. Yeah. I would say that this is 16th, 17th century, oh, wow. century design of the brocade from China. Right. And because the worms were not available in the high altitude, therefore the Tibetans who were crazy about the textile of the Chinese would depict right. this on the precious uh, boxes uh, like this. I see. Okay, okay. This is really something. This is really something. Let me show the top of the... Let's see. Thank God it's light, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's light. Okay, see the clouds motif you were mentioning here. Yes, the huh? clouds motif. The clouds motif. Uh, yeah. 19th century, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, right. in beautiful condition. Right. Of course, we can see some wear and tear. I mean, some of the lacquer has come off, and therefore I can see the veins of the, of the timber, oh, of, the, of the wood. It's 200, 300 years, huh? Yes, it's but amazing the colors here in very good condition. I love the size a lot. A and again, we have here the usual ledge. Oh, yes. Oh, secure. And again, this would be forged iron. And forged iron. And forged iron. And uh, inside, we Oof. see the, the beautiful condition of this chest. Uh, let me show them. Yeah. Well, you should definitely come by and see yourself, but uh, I tell you, this is really something. Uh, it's an absolute treasure chest. Very, very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. So I mentioned about the stripes, zen-like, very abstract. Then we see the tiger, and we understand perfectly by looking at it uh, that this is a tiger. The body, you look at the clump and all uh, uh, the, the, the rest. Uh, then there's a third motive, okay. and uh, that motive uh, is basically you only see, again, the pelt. So the painting of a pelt with uh, the, the back and front uh, legs uh, and actually the face. I see. This is what it looks like. Well, I'm just, I'm just wondering and thinking whether you know, there's a great size and it's tiger, it's tiger year. I'm just thinking whether Will Mastrin be using this chest uh, for the upcoming re-blessing sessions to bring more tiger prosperity uh, to all my clients? And the next event is on the 19th of February. We're going to use the mega pillar of light again. Yes. Uh, for the rings, as you know. Probably, you know, this might come into play. I don't know, yeah. Why not? It be magnificent, you know? It's absolutely excellent, magnificent. We're, we're quite sure. I'm 100% sure that we are using a mega pillar of light for the replacing of the rings, 91 slots again. And uh, the, the tanzi, which is like amazing, love the thing, the prosperity tanzi uh, for the incense, layer by layer. So this one, I'll see what inspiration Master Yin has. This is stunning. It's, I like the size a lot. Really. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Now, one last point I would like to make, and that is if you happen to see a tiger pelt, and with the tiger pelt, also the head of the tiger. Look closely at the forefront. Oh. Yes. And when you look at the forefront, you will see that there are designs very reminiscent of the Chinese character King. Ah, okay. So, you know, all this association between the power, the the, 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 the beautiful strength of the animal is also related to a king, which right. again, they right. share Absolutely. the same the same characteristics. Right, right. So definitely it must have belonged to someone with great courage or someone with great status and power. So we can definitely guess that it might have been stored. Things that are precious. If not, once again, if not, why they have the iron forge this thing for what purpose is to lock it? 
and something precious is inside. High Lama would possibly have its own paraphernalia. Thanks for bringing this. I love this thing. I love beautiful. the size. It, it's, it's a very be beautiful. I love the size a lot. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We have okay. not, not finished with, uh, with uh, Tibet. Oh, we're still in Tibet now. Yeah. We're still in Tibet. We still have something more collection to show. I think we have something very interesting. Right. As we said, it's a presentation of animals. Tigers and big Tigers. Cats. Uh, we are representing cats, and yeah. we and I will explain now what are these oh. two wonderful a pair. It's a beautiful pair of right. the snow lion. Right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So this now, is a, this is a pair of snow lions. This is a pair of snow lions. Now let me tell you that this has been made out of one sheet, of course two pieces, right. of thin copper which has been hand beaten and basically it's hand uh, beaten outwards so it's been, I say, in not a technical way, it's embossed. Right. So when you look at it, you understand the way it has been embossed. And look at the beautiful patina that we see from the back. And then we see some beautiful nails that keep everything together. Now, snow lion. These are snow... These are technically snow lions. You won't believe that these are the symbols of Tibet. Tibet from 1909 to 1959 had in the flag representing the country the snow lion. Why? Yes, now that you mention, yes. On top of this, you, the banknotes that were used together with the stamps were also, they also had the symbolism of the snow lions. I see. Snow lions. Let's think about what is typical of Tibet. It's basically a country which is covered with snow for most of the time. And therefore, these were actually white. Mm. Snow lions, mythological animals, right? Okay, which were totally white, and the mane was the only color difference that would be either light green or light blue. Right. Now, let's examine. Look at the nose quite a pronounced nose, bulging eyes. For me, it's very beautiful, the mouth with the teeth. At, from the inside, we would see the tongue here, colored in red. Again, very fierceful, very. And from the side, you would see the main of the now, everything is perfectly chiseled. Yes. Very, very detailed. Now, we see here, there's a bell, okay? It's almost like, what I would say, a dog-like, but it's intended to basically to protect and to protect the Buddha. Now, when we see some of the altars, underneath the altars, there would be the, the snow lion. Sometimes we would see eight snow lions. Why eight? Basically are the bodhisattva leeching oh. in, on their way to enlightenment. I see, I see. So let, let's look at the details. Right. I mean, we can see the, the, the four paws very beautifully carved. I mean, this is the original color of the red, the pigment, which is very similar to the, what we see in the eyes. That's great. They look scary, but they are not, in my opinion. I find them extremely beautiful. And they try to basically make sure that evil does not enter. I see. What, so you mentioned that, okay, li lions, no lions, the bad symbol. There we get it. Uh, what, what age again, sorry? This would be the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. 100 plus years. 100, 100 plus, plus years, years. Um, yes. 
what, how did they because we have friends who are asking like uh, where did they actually place this thing very, something like that we can guess but this very interesting question very very good to ask it, for me this was part of a major altar okay oh. again this is protection and it's protection for the buddha so where do these a hanging up thing they're hanging up yes. imagine a big altar maybe made all of copper gilded and they were part and parcel for me if you ask me see. i've seen when i went i traveled to tibet uh, at the bottom of the altar for the buddha there were two of these uh, snow lions so in other words lifting the, the the buddha so it's definitely more than just so some some of them are guessing that is this a decor uh, on doors not exactly it's actually part of the altar this is my take this is my take so and i yeah, chances yes yeah and i don't think i'm far away from reality important symbol this important symbol goes back to the seventh century right when Buddhism from India reached Tibet. Right. And even before, there are, there are studies which have confirmed that the use of the snow lion was from the Bon period, the Bon religion, which basically predates the Buddhist, the, the Buddhist Definitely, faith. Definitely, yeah. Yes. So, amazing, beautiful, wonderful, detailed, um representing tibet so we have the uh big chest from tibet with the tiger pelt or the stripe of the tiger we have this amazing beautiful chest look at the color of this chest the, 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 it's just so beautiful uh with uh tiger 100 percent and we have this pair that is used to be on the altar altar pretending super blessed uh snow lions snow lions copper beaten into uh beaten from one sheet um, from one sheet of copper and then gilded and then there's lacquer lacquer paintings uh, right, that right, we right, see. right so it's not supposed to be on the door it's supposed to be on the altar on the altar and what i believe if i clearly look there are holes here right which make me think and they are on the opposite side which confirm in my opinion that they were nails that would allow this pieces to be mounted mounted correct mounted there, there, there are mounted. small holes there for the nails to mount it on the the, the altar so the big altar you can imagine the big altar the Sentai, and then you, know, you have this two there are decorations so-called decorations there but actually they are the protectors and the guardians the protector and the guardians of what is going on on the altar as well yes i see so like what cross culture but likewise uh, the mirror that we have yes or we we make into a mirror it was the top part of top part of the the shelter of the Buddha the Burmese piece is also an altar piece so this is also an altar piece I think this is an wow. altar piece definitely wow. imagine how big the altar would be and I don't think anybody can beat in my opinion the Tibetan when it comes to metalwork they are really? absolutely fantastic they can do minute things in splendid ways please when you come do ask for the magnifying lens i oh. repeat this yeah. at nausea forgive me for this but look at all the details right, right. it actually looks and uh, it gives you the impression of the details of the hair yeah. which is basically the main of the snow line the snow line definitely white, has better hair than me white <laughs> now over the century of course the representation has varied yeah at the beginning they were very fearful uh, fearful uh, and they were you know scary right that's the right word and slowly slowly have moved and they become similar to what i see as the lions uh, in the iconography of the chinese right right and uh, you know more and more as you because you, you mentioned you're describing we see the bell and the striped thing there which yes. means you mentioned that it's more like a dog now correct it's so more like a dog for sure we know that these are not wild snow lions these are tamed or domesticated or somehow they belong to someone so they are the guardians of the particular monastery 
Correct. They Correct. count. Yes. No lions. Now, these are mythological animals. They don't exist in real life. This I was see. the fruit of the imagination of the Tibetans. Well, we have it here. Yeah. So we have it here. You know, the power of imagination is so important. Yes. Right? Because, I mean, what we can see, we are mortals, and we can see from our situation. But this mythical uh, beings, uh, it's a testament of the imagination of our ancestors. And because of imagination, then they can think about grander and more spectacular things that's beyond human limits. You know, for instance, like drawing back to like Mas Yun's paintings and art, the things that he writes, the things that he paints, they are grand. I mean, even the one here, the same, same, uh, you know, same rendition, same wordings. Uh, the sun and the moon double the light of it. Like the sun and the moon, they are grand and they are vast. It's uh, beyond our human understanding. But if we, when we see certain things like that and we shun away from it, then we will be smaller than life. In order for us to be larger than life, we have to put on our imagination, put on our thinking caps and vision. And that's one of the purpose of Master Yun's paintings and art as well. It allows you to actually expand your cap capacity, expand your perspective and your horizon. And one day, you never know when you look back there, oh yeah, I have really expanded cross beyond my limits and limitations, and you're there. You know, I think probably just like the ancestors, they, like tiger and lions, they are something to be fearful of. But it became a symbol for the people. Snow lions, tiger, leopards. And then, you know, when a llama he actually wears the tiger pelt for it, yes. you see, as if he is the lion, as if he is the tiger, then he, he becomes the lion and the tiger, and that's how he becomes a leader. And he commands respect he commands and authority. Respect. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you were talking about imagination, which I think it's a very beautiful concept. Would there be art yeah. without imagination? Oh, no, definitely not. There will never be art without imagination. There has to be imagination. And it is imagination that sets us apart from animals. Right, absolutely see, right. <laughs> you see, I mean, lions and uh, we talk. Since we talk about lions and tigers, okay. Let's see. Let's say uh, we see because currently we hear the ox, uh, huh? We hear the cow. When a lion and a tiger sees an ox, they just eat it like that. But um, the, the 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 humans are different. Uh, for sure, our predecessors definitely have eaten raw meat before. Uh, some of us are still doing like beef pata, you know. <laughs> <laughs> sushi is pretty raw, yeah. We did sushi the other time. Um, one of the things that Mastin has, the guang, this is the, the, the meaning of light, but it's actually a symbol of people praying to the fire. It's because the fi when they realize they discover fire, they can actually chase away wild beasts. At the same time, they can cook food, which actually allows us to accept, uh, absorb the nutrition faster, therefore the development of the brain and so on. Uh, but it is humans who have the creativity and the imagination about how this ox can be eaten. You know? yes. <laughs> There's so many 10,000 ways that a, uh, human beings can enjoy an uh, ox and, uh, and a cow, uh, right? And, um, but you know, if you're a tiger, if you're a lion, then it's done, yeah. So imagination is the thing that drives us forward. Imagination is the thing that actually prospers us, right? And uh, that is what I think our ancestors... I think what we do in Museum in Lotus, it's also providing a source of imagination for the people. Platform. For you, yeah. Because it, one thing for sure, you can never go back to the 18th, 19th century. That's two, 300 years ago. But through the artifacts and the antiques that the private collection of Master Yun, we get to relieve those moments and we get to think about or put ourselves in the position that what our ancestors, or what those people back then, they were thinking about. You know, I think, I, I take the mirror, I, okay, sorry, Southern Chess. Yes. All the Northern Chess, uh, Qing Dynasty, early Qing, uh, this, ji, uh, ji si mu, this thing. Yes. Right, when you sit here, then you get a chance to relieve how it feels like to be a rich merchant back then, 
or an aristocrat, or uh, a, a high official. And when you look at the snow lions, then you get the feel of what they were going through back then, and that expands your perspective. I always joke with them, you know, a lot of people, I mean, Singaporeans are famous for many things. One of the things is that it's famous to complain a lot of stuff. Huh? I mean, you've been in Singapore for a while. What is the, what is the most common complaint you've heard about? Well, the most common complaint is when I used to be in the bank, <laughs> <laughs> people would often come and say, I have a proposal from another organization. Would you be able to match it? And I said, well, let me hear what you have to say. And it's all about $100 more, not per month, per year. <laughs> and I found that that it's like, really oh my God, why? $100. Can we wait until we do the review? And don't worry, I'll take care. No, either you match it immediately, otherwise I would leave. So these are the kind of complaints that I used to receive. But other than that, I have to say that the people who used to work for the bank, they were very, very nice. Right, right. Yeah, you're right. So, you know, because in Singapore, we are a country that is very pampered. They, they, there was a period of time, uh, I think you were still working in the bank back then, they call us the air-conditioned nation. Literally, you know, you, you just, there's just no area in Singapore that is not air-conditioned, right? So we are very pampered, and so a lot of small and minute things, um, people are very anxious about it. If tomorrow's food go up by 50 cents, there will be a large outcry. Yes. Right, so $100 is definitely a large outcry, right? And uh, so the, the, the complaint is always about the money thing. But it's about the money, I would yeah. say, yes. But you know, but Singapore is one of the wealthiest nations and the citizens are one of the wealthiest people on I Earth. really think, and the quality of life, let me say, it's absolutely, we're safe here. You know, this, basically the crime is almost inexistent. Yeah. There are some, limita yeah. some limitations, but the benefit of the limitation, I think, uh, are very, very high. Yeah, and of course in Singapore, then you actually have lotus of water as well. <laughs> and we have Mrs. Giuseppe de Giusa with us, then we get to enjoy all this. You know, we get to enjoy all this and Mastuin's art in comfort. I'm just saying it out loud. I mean, imagine if we were in Malaysia. I would have to lock all these things up, <laughs> right? 100% yeah, we we'll have to lock all these things up. If they know that there are this, uh, because Singaporeans are more civilized and the world is safer here, we have to lock all these things up. And, and you, if you put a, a painting uh, of Master Yuen's uh, back home, I mean, in, um, in, in Kuala Lumpur, in, in Johor Bahru, you will have to make sure you have high security for it. I have relatives, extended relatives in Malaysia. And uh, you know when Singaporeans brag about their house in Singapore, they say, oh, look, uh, you know, my neighbor is Suite or what, you know, like uh, the swimming pool is big or what. If you go to KL and if someone wants to brag about their house, they will all highlight the features at least. They say, oh, yeah, in this estate, it's a landed estate, by the way, in this estate, there's, uh, there's 24 hours security guards with shotguns. <laughs> and and uh, the fans, uh, at what hour to what hour, it will be, uh, they will have electricity. To highlight to you the security features, it's a plus point. Absolutely. No one does that in Singapore. No. no one does that in Singapore. So here in Singapore, uh, Holland as well, Holland is very good. You have the comfort of owning Mastuin's arts at peace, <laughs> prosper at peace. Other countries, you know, I'm a, I apologize, but I think Italy may be one of them, that it's not too good to let people know that you're too rich because, you know, you might be a... Uh, huh? Not at all. You, yeah. have to be, you have to be very, be very careful. Yeah. Very, very careful. Very careful. So that's the thing. Yeah. So here is a good place. Uh, uh, since we talk about Italy, we talk about the snow lions. I love the... Chess. I really love this chess. I really hope that Martin uses this for the re-blessing session. I the think upcoming. I don't know what it's going to do. Yeah. Mr. Khan, I think a, a little suggestion, but yeah. just a suggestion. I think we should represent this uh, beautiful chess. Uh, and I would like to go a little bit more in detail. Okay. I think we have quite a number of items. And so I've skipped uh, on uh, many aspects of this uh, beautiful chess. And maybe we should in the future represent it. Oh, sure, yeah. Because the, today is the last episode of this lunar year. Next week, it's a... Next week, what day is it? It's going to be... Uh, oh, it's going to be the first day of China. So next week, we will not be having museum in Lotus. Because uh, the Lotus Gallery will be open for prayers. We will announce this on Thursday and Friday about how the schedule will be like. 
But next Tuesday, there's no museum in Lotus. So we take a break for one week, gonna have some, you know, the, your, your favorite, the, the tossing <laughs> of the, yes. the raw fish thing. Yes. But when we come back the next week, the week after, which is the 8th of February, then uh, we are going to have a museum in Lotus resume and we will bring this chest back again. After all, we, that episode, we, we just entered the year of the tiger. Of course, of we got course. to have this uh, fella here. A nice reiteration. Yeah, okay. we got to have, I love this thing. I want this to come back many times. I'm definitely going to keep this in the gallery for a long time. I just hope that the more we talk about it, if Master is watching, then hopefully that he can use this well <laughs> the the blessing session. I think it's a great symbol of prosperity and power. And this power. One. Yeah. And strength. strength. Extremely strength. And strength. So, uh, of course, uh, I, I super like the setting today and, and ex ex actually beside us, we have something special as well. Am I right? Absolutely. Be because when you talk about this pair um, with us, then, you know, uh, it will bring the whole Itali it Italian and Chinese culture together. Yes. Right. But before we get into the cross-cultural aspect, uh, I would like just to highlight a number of little things I think important about these lions. This pair. This pair. Now, they might look as stone, not stone. This is granite. And why this do- granite. This is granite, extremely heavy. When you look at it and when you do come, and you have a torch, you get uh, Mr. Khan to lend you a torch, you will see that the little sparkle, almost like diamonds. You uh, have <laughs> my phone. <laughs> can you see? As, right, I, right, right. as I move it, you see all the sparkle. Okay? Beautiful. It seems like there are little diamonds, uh, and that tells me that it's not stone, it's basically granite one of the hardest kind of stone in the family of stone which is very difficult to carve i must let you know that this pair of lions as mr pino has mentioned extremely difficult to carve granite and is extremely extremely heavy you already know that the sandstone elephants uh, were heavy but they are not heavy to the extent that people keep moving them around, that uh, this is extremely heavy. Extremely, extremely heavy. I see. Let me tell you what I believe the period in which they were made. Okay, the time. The, the time. of this pair of granite uh, lions. This is one dynasty. I might not pronounce it correctly. It's the dynasty that precedes the Ming. The Yuan dynasty? Yes. The Mongolians? the Yuan dynasty, which goes up to 1368. So this is the dynasty. This have almost 500 years. What? Wait, yes. wait, 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 I got to, you know, that, that, the chairs you're sitting on is the Qing dynasty. Qing dynasty. And the Yuan dynasty, it's Yuan, Yuan Chao The Yuan dynasty is from 12, 71 to 1368. to 1368. These are beyond 500 years. This is a 700 years at least. This is my estimation of the time. This pair of, I can't emphasize enough, this pair of stone lions next to me and Mr. Pino, they are from the Yuan dynasty, 700 over years. And they are in the gallery now. Oh my God, okay. In the gallery now why they were used but before we go into how they were used which is simple let's look at the proportion okay wonderful proportion they're not extremely big both of the two lions basically are on a base on a pedestal which again is a granite pedestal yes when you look they have bulging eyes Yes. They have a sort of a flat nose. They have a big mouth and you can actually see the teeth very pronounced. Yeah. You see that the ears basically come out from the head and then underneath there are there is decoration. For right. me that decoration is the main. Right. Yes. All of this. Now they appear to be almost identical. 
than not. In the carving process, uh, of course, the cover illustrate them in a different way, but these are usually placed outside important places, and that could be houses, that could have been tombs, that could have been aristocrats, and the purpose was to prevent evil to come in and to keep inside the houses basically the wealth yes i mean if it's chinese so we are now we are into china this is china uh, as in the main main china tibet is part of china but the main china thing uh we chinese uh, we are familiar with lions and tigers they mean uh, authority they mean guardians you know it's a familiar concept to all of us uh, but these are, I'm still shocked by the fact that these are from Yuan Dynasty yes. because like, like this really donkey years ago. Qing chess, early Qing cabinet with Ming style yes. and then Yuan Dynasty. Oh, we have all the three generations here. We have the three generation, absolutely. Wow, okay, so this is Yuan. Yuan. Now, the way that it's been, they've been sculpture is not too sophisticated. I would say this is primitive, but does this detract to the beauty of the two sculptures, I don't actually think so. I see. Plus, look at the weather effects. Now, because of the weather effects, uh, they seem that they have different coloration. No. The, the stone was exactly the same. They both came from the same piece of granite, and the effects of the weather are seen here. They're beautifully seated as I mentioned on uh, two pedestal, when you actually look at the ball, there's basically a ball. What yeah. does the ball represent? The world. The world. It will represent the world. On top of this, uh, this are considered the male lion, as opposed to the female, because in more recent periods, uh, and in particular, in the Ming and the Qing dynasty, the, the lion was usually represented, the male lion, with the female lion, which had a pup. And that yes, yes. Gave, the, gave basically, they, they were a couple, and therefore, the ying and the yang. Right, right. Okay? So the ying would be the female and the yang would be the male. Now, when we look at the base of this two, in particular this one, we see a character. Let, let me just move okay. for one second. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I should be doing it, but not very not convenient <laughs> with the leg recently. <laughs> Thank you. Now, yeah, we do see it, yeah. We see this character. Now, yeah. to the best of my ability and understanding. I'll share it again. I try to shine a light on it. Yes. Uh, to make it here. There's a Chinese word here. It is a Chinese word, which means Ends, yeah. center. Yeah, it means center. It's a zhong. Zhong, like, you know, when we play mahjong, the hong zhong, the zhong. This is the zhong. Yeah, center. It means center. It can mean central. It can mean, um, you know, even China has this word on it. The Zhongguo is it's like they, they, they call themselves in the past Chinese. They thought that they were in the center of the world. So it's Zhongguo. So thank you for the explanation, which is very important. It might be also related, and for this I am not sure, and please don't quote me, is the position that the two sculpture had vis-a-vis -vis the, the house. Right. Vis-a-vis the tomb vis-a-vis -vis whatever that is. On the other side, I do see a symbol. Unfortunately, because the way yes. the base was cut, mm -hmm. here we see. It's not readable. Right. Right. I can guess. I think. Okay, so if you come here and see, you will see that the word is chopped off halfway. Yes. But from the strokes of the Chinese word, and since I graduated from Peking University, <laughs> uh, 
it should be the word that's called example. Example. Mm. In Chinese, it should be li zi de li. It's a, it's a word that represents uh, example. But it's like way chopped off, I'm guessing. Right, right. Yeah. So, and I think, I think that because it's been chopped off and we can see how it is, that means that both of them should be on a high um, position. Pillar, probably. High or pillar. maybe you enter a door and you see that on left and right, you see that thing. Yes. They are up the, all the way up there. So you have to look at them like this. And then on that pillar, there is a couplet yes. or a description or something of sorts. And one side starts with this word. Yeah, the other side starts with zhong. Because a couplet in Chinese, you have always to read it on the right side first, then the left right. side. There should be, it's either an inscription of what the place is, like so and so, so and so, what, what embassy. If not, it should be a couplet. That means something. Unfortunately, we only have the first word of the whole couplet. Right. So that means they are higher than, than all of us at that position. Possibly. That's my guess, yeah. Possibly. Now, what a beautiful meaning to have something that protects you. Yes. Protects the house. Does not allow the evil to come in because it would scare off the evil. Allowing the wealth uh, instead to come in and to stay with the house. So it's about opulence, it's about wealth, it's about all of this sign of protection. Right. Can I tell a story about lions? Yes. Uh, so you're the tiger, so lions is their relative. Do you we know that when it comes to dragons, it represents the emperor, right? That we know. Um, and uh, of course, the dragon is the most powerful creature of them all. But a lot of us do not know that sometimes the lion is stronger than the dragon. Weird, huh? Uh, because in Chinese, the language, the, the word lion, which in Chinese we read it as shi zi, shi, uh, it, it's a synonym. It, uh, it sounds the same as what it means to be teacher, lao si. yeah, and, and even the characters is pretty much the same, the way it's written. So, especially during Qing Dynasty, um, that uh, onwards, or actually throughout the whole Chinese uh, tradition, the whole Confucian religion, uh, uh, perspective and the philosophy, that um, <coughs> teachers are in a position that they have, should have the highest respect. So even the emperor, has to pay respect to his teacher first. We call it xian xing si zhe li. You must pay respect to the teacher first. Yes, even though you're the emperor or the person who's teaching you is very important. So in that scenario, the lion is of higher rank than the dragon. Incredible, incredible. Yeah. And I, I talked about this in the beginning of uh, our, this episode. I was asking Mr. Pino about Italy, that's how they celebrate Chinese New Year and the growing Chinese population communities in uh, Italy now. Um, and actually, when, since we are here about this Yuan Dynasty, oh my God, 700 over years, a uh, pair of granite lions, which we see the remnants of the Chinese couplet words here. It's actually, well, we are actually really concluding this episode with an excellent connection between Italy and China. Because Yuan Dynasty is where, the, <laughs> you know, right? Yeah, <laughs> is when Marco Polo uh, came, not came, not when, <laughs> went all the way from Italy to China yes. to meet with uh, Kublai Khan. Yes. Yeah. So if you if you know what I'm talking about, then you know. If you don't know, come here and feel the lions and the tigers. Marco Polo was the one who in the Yuan Dynasty, uh, 1300, 12, 12 to 1300s, went over to China then, which was Yuan Dynasty, met with Kublai Khan, eat with him, a lot of stuff ha happened. And he went back and he wrote uh, the Marco Polo Travels, something like that. Okay. Rumor has it that he even brought back noodles, which became pasta today, but this is very contested. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so actually, this, our two civilizations have crossed paths many years ago. But let me say that there's so many features in com common till this day. The sense of family. Yeah, it, absolutely. United. Absolutely. One sacrifices for the other. Correct. Which 
in other culture, you don't find the same oh. thing. So this this it, 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 Italy, Italy culture, and, and this Chinese Chinese, thing, Chinese, yes, yeah, it's it's very close because in Chinese because of Confucianism, the family thing and the the, the loyalty, the country thing is super important. In uh, if you watch enough, uh, it, Italian or movies about it, Italy or movies about Italian mafias or whatever that is, they <laughs> say. Never betray the family. Isn't no. the first contract? <laughs> the you, concept. Never do, you never do that. Yeah, the concept <laughs> of family is equally important. And, uh, you know, because this, our show has always been a very um, cross cultural and um, bringing you back to a different time period and so on. You see, it's so important. And um, I think that today we can really say that, you see, we talked about that. Uh, I, I mentioned in my other series that Art Beyond Museum is like a uh, Silk Road, a new Silk Road because we are connecting with Persia, we are connecting with Mediterranean and so on. Uh, I think like this what we are doing today, it's also something like that. It's like what Marco Polo did before, they went all the way to connect Europe and uh, our dear China back then and now we are connecting you to the histories of the world in different places and uh, like Marco Polo. You've actually given me a thought uh, which reminds me of something very important. Uh, do the lions uh, come from China? What is the connection? Right. The connection is that important officials coming from Central Asia and from Persia brought them to China around the 6th century, and those were gift given to the important uh, aristocrats, the court official of China. You're right, That's yes. how it all started. It was the Silk Route, and of course the Chinese adopted. Ad adopting meant also to give them the value in relation to their requirement, take away evil spirit. Absolutely. So even lions itself, you're correct, because lions are they don't, they don't originate from China. Not everything originates from China, not lions. So lions, the presence of lions itself, it's already a symbol of like how what Marco Polo did in the past. So this is really a new Marco Polo travel. Luckily we don't have to walk ten thousand miles. No, we don't. Stay here in cool tuxedos. <laughs> Drinking Lauren Perry champagne. I think this is the thing about this show, huh? And feeling that we are in a museum, because yes, this absolutely. is what I feel when I come, without having to pay the tickets, without, ah. uh, without having, you know, we just stop, we examine, we spend an hour or so in debating, uh, in raising Sorry. doubts, at the same time, giving opinions uh, and presenting objects, uh, which Absolutely. In my opinion, very beautiful. So, once again, uh, from now to uh, the whole of Chinese theory anyway, <coughs> while you're preparing for your annual feng shui, come by the gallery, have a few of all these collections, appreciate smart screen art with the support of all this amazing, amazing and very meaningful and I think very prosperous as well, uh, antiques that has got to do with the lions, the tigers, the leopards, and explore and enjoy. Right. So once again, uh, next Tuesday, which is the first day of Chinese New Year, we won't be having our museum in Lotus. We will take a small break. Uh, Mr. Pino has to go and do a lot of, uh, uh, has gone low a lot of Yi Sang. Yes. So uh, <laughs> we won't disturb him on that day. But the, the week after, on the 8th of February, we will come back and we will continue with this lion and tiger uh, series. Uh, hopefully we have more to explore. Right. With a lot <coughs> of pleasure. A lot of pleasure. Cheers. And Cheers. Have and a great Chinese New Year. Same. Same to you. <laughs>